Another character release event is just around the corner as Exeter Row 1.15 slash X is joining Tacticus. Today we'll do a walkthrough of how you should be completing all these missions within the two week event. Hello everyone, we recently looked at character release events for the Tangida Motive Force event and especially how to prepare for the event. That video was really part 1 and is linked below. Now we're going to get into part 2 and do a deep dive into the missions, looking to see what tips and tricks you can use to minimize your efforts but maximize your rewards. On Sunday the 11th of February, we begin the Exeter Row 1.15 slash X Motive Force event. They are the fourth Admech joining us and they really look like an interesting character to pick up. Next week we'll do a deep dive into this Sicarian Rust Stalker's usefulness in my usual Does This Character Do Anything series, but for now let's do a walkthrough of his missions from the character release event. Now as his event hasn't been released yet, we're going to use Tangida's missions, but they are nearly identical missions for Exeter Row. On screen you can see that these are the missions you need to complete, and so let's dive right in. In mission 1, we have two very simple starting points, win two lightning victories and defeat five enemies with melee attacks. Just always make sure that you're finishing both parts of the missions in two battles. So here are some tips to help you along. Firstly, make sure that you're finishing both parts of the missions in two battles. And just note that you need to do battles to get the lightning victories. You can't just raid a battle that you've completed beforehand, you have to make sure that you actually complete it. Secondly, you can't use the early Indomitus missions here because they don't have lightning victories. So even though you could save energy, be careful not to do what I've done too many times in the past and end up wasting energy without getting a lightning victory. The lightning victories start at Indomitus 19, but let's dive in and do our first one together. So we have gone with Celestine, Kalgar, Butchard, Bellator and Tangida, and I've really been enjoying Tangida. After talking a bit negatively about him because the Admechs don't fit into the Imperial teams, I have to say that I'm definitely seeing some real use for him in Actus. Vitruvius, not quite so much yet, but the others definitely. And let's finish with a Kalgar Gauntlets of Ultramar. Awesome. And so one mission done. In mission two, we have to raid five campaign battles and defeat 10 enemies with Imperial units. For this, I would first get my 10 enemy kills, and for that I would simply go to Indomitus Battle 9. This gets you 10 kills by Imperials, and only costs you 3 energy. Now I know that some people have said that it's a bad idea to do these early missions for the character release events as you get less points for them, but what they're missing out on is that you should be looking at how many machine spirit points you get per energy spent. So for these missions, I get 10 machine spirit points and I spend 3 energy. This gives me 3.33 repeating machine spirit points per energy spent. And that's actually roughly the same for all the different types of missions, whether it's 3 energy missions, 5 energy missions, 6 energy missions, or 10 energy missions, you always end up with around about 3.33 energy. So definitely take advantage of the 3 energy missions during the release event. Just remember that you'll get less gold and no items, so there is a downside of course. Once you've raided your 5 missions, claim your rewards and go on to mission 3. In mission 3 we have to win 20 campaign battles and use abilities 30 times. Now for this, I just actually play through the campaign battles and make sure that I'm always using my abilities. You could of course use an onslaught token, but I think they're more useful elsewhere. So again, the early Indomitus missions are well worth playing through here. They are quick, and they cost little energy. Once you've blasted through your 30 abilities, quickly raid the rest of the campaign battles and move on to mission 4. In mission 4 we have to play 10 arena battles and defeat 50 units with ranged attacks. As you will have watched my earlier video about preparing for character events, you'll have the 10 arena battle tokens saved up and be ready to roll. So pick some ranged characters and get as many kills as you can with them. I just hope for your sake that when you go into arena that you do a lot better than my team did here. The ideal situation is that you finish 10 arena battles with 50 ranged kills, but if you don't quite manage it, then just finish off with a couple of campaign mission battles. Again, something like Indomitus 9 will give you a lot of kills for little energy, otherwise something like Indomitus 46 where you'll get 10 guaranteed ranged kills will work for you. Mission 5 sees us dealing 10,000 damage using abilities and then winning 100 campaign battles. Similarly to what I did before, I will just play through the campaign battles at this point and use characters whose abilities really hurt. 
Personally, I love using Calgar, Butchard, Ulf, Thaddeus, or Angrax for these. Obviously, I'm not using them in the current mission you're watching, but that's only because I haven't completed this mission yet, and so I need to have Bellator, Certus, and Varro in the team. The other tip here is that it's better to go for one of the later missions as the enemies simply have more health and so take more damage from your skills. I'm currently playing an elite mission to really maximise the damage. Once you've gathered 10,000 damage, and this might take you a bit quicker than you expect, just raid the rest of the campaign missions as cheaply as possible and then continue with the event. Mission 6 is another quick and easy one. You only need to heal or repair 2,500 in battle and win 10 battles without summoning any units. Again, we will want to be maximising our energy usage, although you shouldn't have many 3 or 5 energy missions left, so make sure you are doing the 6 energy mirror missions. These give better odds than the normal campaigns when collecting items. I have an earlier video all about energy usage that is worth checking out too. The way I do the healing mission is to grab some of the healers like Isabella, Incisus, Actus, Makotep, Rotbone, Gibbascraps or any of the Necrons for self-healing and then just go in and skip turns until I've gathered 2,500 in one match. It doesn't take long, just count around 25 hits from the enemies that deal 100 damage each and then you're done. Mission 7 sees us start to use up some of our saved tokens as we have to use abilities 20 times with Imperial units and play 2 salvage run battles. As with the arena battles, you should have prepared by saving up salvage run tokens from the day before to make sure that you can glide through this mission. Then when you pick characters, pick ones with actives that are easy to use. And of course, make sure you do the Imperial salvage runs this time, and not the Xenos or Chaos. Also. Just a small tip for salvage runs generally, it's really advisable in the Imperial salvage runs to have the Adepta Sororitas sisters like Vindicta, Isabella or Rosita because their active faith skill gives them an extra 10% crit chance. This is really important for being able to break through the metal strongbox and get those not flog a shards every time. Once you've done your two salvage runs, either play a couple more campaign missions with 5 Imperial units and get them all to use their actives, or if you have more than 10 arena missions then feel free to use some of them as well. Just make sure that you keep 10 back as you'll need to use them shortly. In mission 8 we have to complete 2 guild raid battles and deal 20,000 damage to enemies in battle. This is an important mission to reach in day 1 for me personally because if you delay then you can get stuck when the guild raids are resetting between seasons. And if you have prepared for the character release event you'll definitely be able to reach this point and more. The 20,000 damage should be easy to get as you'll probably be dealing 20k damage to the guild raid bosses themselves, so the only thing is making sure you have the guild raid tokens available to use. Once you complete both guild raids, move swiftly on to the next mission. Mission 9 has us dealing 7,500 psychic damage and killing 75 enemies with ranged attacks. For this mission I will use one of my saved onslaught tokens to do the bulk of the damage, bringing a full ranged team and making sure I have psychers in there. I'll prioritise the psychers doing the damage and at higher levels of onslaughts you can easily get 50 kills, which makes this the perfect opportunity to get nearly all the way through the mission without it taking too long. Now you may be tempted to use two onslaught tokens here, but as you'll see shortly, it's better to use one token now and the rest in a bit. We are still on day one, believe it or not. To get the rest of your ranged kills, there are three very good missions you can use. These allow you to get the rest of your kills for only six energy. The missions are Octarius 7, where you kill Grotz, Mirror Octarius 61, where you also kill Grotz, and Indomitus 37, where you kill Scarabs. I'm going to give you a proper walkthrough of these when we're doing mission 18, because they become very important for that mission. So feel free to skip forwards a little bit to look at the setup of those, and then come back when you're done and we'll jump into mission 10. There isn't much to say about mission 10, you have to win 15 battles with full imperial lineups and play 10 arena battles. Just do your best in the arena and then finish the rest as cheaply as possible. In mission 11 we have to do 25 lightning victories and defeat 100 units of the Necrons faction. As you need to get 25 lightning victories anyway, you can just play a bunch of the Indomitus missions, collect some of the items you need and then kill a bunch of Necrons as well. 
If you finish your 25 lightning victories before you finish killing 100 necrons, then you can easily play something like Indomitus 37 as you can see on screen now. It has 3 scarabs and they respawn often, so you can just stick Thaddeus behind some tanks and blow them apart. Bring along Incisus or Isabella for healing and then you can do this as long as you want. One small tip with the scarabs. You can see which ones still have to replicate and which ones don't. If you click on them, you will see that the Scarab Summon active ability is either grey or still lit up. So in this one it's already used in battle, whereas on this one you can see that it's lit up and it still says it's got its active ability. So if you just make sure that you don't kill the ones which still have their active ability ready, then they will respawn infinitely and you can get lots of kills. Okay, we are already into mission 12 and here we need to heal or repair 5000 health in battle and play one onslaught battle. This is why I'm saying that you need to keep back some onslaught tokens as this mission is really easy. Here I will go with the Necrons and Mechanicals and then do a Xenos onslaught or I'll take Isabella and go sit in a corner behind a nice shield wall. I'll count the hits as I go and make sure that I just skip rounds until I've healed 5000 damage before moving on to the next mission. And here we are already at mission 13. Unlucky for some, and maybe for us, as this is usually around the last mission you'll reach in the first day. Unless you've gone a bit crazy and saved way too much energy during the week. For this mission you have to defeat 75 enemies and use abilities 50 times with Imperial units. Here I will use my third onslaught token and I'll just do as many abilities as I can with my weaker character until they die and can be replaced by another character. It's possible to get 35 abilities triggered on one Imperial Onslaught if you manage to do it perfectly and that goes a long way to pushing through this mission. Then just finish off the campaigns and either get ready for day 2 by sleeping well, exercising and drinking plenty of fluids or if you have enough energy continue on to the next mission now. And on to day 2 if you're going at the same pace as I do. Maybe you're still working through day 1 as you've saved lots of energy. Or perhaps you're taking your time and enjoying the experience. However you choose to play, mission 14 is a rather straightforward one. You need to win 25 battles using an all imperial character lineup and deal 30,000 damage to enemies in battle. There is very little to say here, the only advice is that you don't waste your arena tokens because you will need at least 10 saved up for a future mission. Other than that, just play through some campaigns where you can use Imperials and collect upgrades that you need. It's better to play some of the later campaign missions as you'll deal more damage to enemies. With mission 15 we are really starting to move into the serious missions and this is why we didn't use any tokens for the last mission. Here you need to use abilities 150 times with Imperial units and play 10 arena battles. I would definitely recommend picking Imperials in the arena whose actives are easy to trigger. This is most characters but someone like Thaddeus or Ancient Thoriad is a guaranteed trigger because you can use them at the start of the match. For everyone else, just play through the battles and then move on to the campaigns to finish getting the rest of your abilities. Mission 16 and we're almost getting to the end. We are still only on day 2 and so if you're getting here you're doing so well and really setting yourself up in the best possible way for the rest of the missions. In this mission you need to defeat 100 enemies with Imperial units and then raid 25 campaign battles. To defeat 100 enemies we are again going to use one of the three missions that I mentioned previously that will allow you to complete this while only using 6 energy. The missions are Octarius 7 where you kill Grotz, Mirror Octarius 61 where you also kill Grotz and Indomitus 37 where you kill Scarabs. And again I will do a detailed walkthrough of them during mission 18. For the raiding of 25 campaign battles just use the early Indomitus missions and save your energy as best you can. Mission 17 is another bigger mission and for this you need to defeat 75 enemies and deal 60,000 damage to enemies in battle. Here I will start off with a simple onslaught to get a bit closer to 75 enemies killed. This will also push me a little bit of the way towards 60,000 damage. I will also do my daily guild raid battles and salvage run battles to move even closer to the target. And then if I still need some more damage I'll play a few elite missions just to finish it off. The reason I specifically say elite missions here is that you will gain more damage per energy than you would if you play one of the 3, 5 or 6 energy battles. This is because the the enemies just have more health and so you can deal more damage. So you may have skipped forwards to look at the three missions I've been discussing along the way and we're going to go through them in a moment. First you can have a sneak peek at mission 18 as you need to deal 50,000 damage using abilities 
and defeat 250 enemies with ranged attacks. For the 50,000 damage using abilities, I will go into the arena battles and use characters that get a lot of damage from their abilities. Marnius, Kalgar, Angrax or Ulf are my personal favourites for this, but experiment yourselves with the characters you have to see which ones do the most for you. For the 250 enemies with ranged attacks. That sounds like a lot, but you can actually do this with just 6 energy. So let's take a look at the mission that you can do it with. Firstly, if you're a newer player and haven't opened up too many missions, then Actarius 7 is a good starting point. In this mission there are 9 grots and you can get them to respawn constantly with a bit of patience. It isn't the most efficient of the missions, but like I said this is good for beginners and definitely how I started out getting through it. Pick a ranged orc and then sit down in the corner, and if you have boss Golgorts, then you can just punch a grot in the face and then his wee gunner will shoot someone. Gibba Scraps will increase the armour of your characters and he can heal the mechanical ones. Finally, Snapareka will work if you put him in the corner and block the enemy grots from reaching him. He is a good alternative if you don't have boss Golgorch yet. It is slow going, but while watching a bit of TV in the background, you can definitely get through it. Next up, let's look at one of the community's favourite way to grind missions, by killing scarabs. We will do this with Indomitus 37 and similar to what we did before we will pick Thaddeus, Burchard, Isabella or Incisus and then a couple of others. We'll make sure that we're only killing scarabs that have used their active ability and then we're just going to sit down in this corner and bomb them out of existence. The third mission we're going to look at is Octarius 61 and this is one of my favourite battles to play. Apart from anything else you have a chance to get some bad moon teeth so it helps upgrade your orcs. Similar to the last battle, we're going to take Thaddeus, Burchard, a healer and a tank. Then you just make your way up here onto this platform. From here you can oversee the ground below and simply pick off the orcs and grots at your leisure. Be careful not to kill too many of the grots as you want them to be respawning, so just skip a bunch of turns until you've a load of them and then let loose with all your imperial might. Mission 19 is usually around about where I start day 3. It has us defeating 100 enemies with melee attacks and winning 75 campaign battles. Again, there isn't much new here for me to discuss, but you have two options for getting through this. Firstly, you can defeat 100 enemies with melee attacks in one battle using the enemies that respawn and then you raid the rest. Or maybe just play through the campaign missions as you go, killing the enemies in consecutive battles. Whichever way you do it, get through it as cheaply as possible and move on. And so here we are at mission 20 out of 20, the last mission where you can get motive force charges for the character you're collecting. It's certainly not a small mission either, you'll need to use abilities 10 times with your new character and win 250 campaign battles. Now the first part of that is already a bit of an issue because you don't actually own the new character yet. In fact, you won't get him until around about the end of week 1, at which point you'll be able to go into any 10 missions and just make sure you use your active ability. For the second part of the mission, just continue raiding the campaign battles every day until you're through it. Once you've completed your 20 missions where you can collect motive force charges, there is always one last bonus mission where you can get a requisition order. For me, this is well worth playing through the event to get. The mission isn't easy as you need to deal 15,000 damage with your new character and again win 250 campaign battles. We all know the plan for the campaign battles, just get through them as cheaply as possible, but what about the damage? That seems like quite a lot for a new character. Well, there are some tricks even at this point. What I will do is go into arena battles or later campaign battles and I'll pick all the characters that can boost my damage. So here in this arena battle I've got Athena, Aldrion, and Marnius Kalgar. Then I'll take a healer as well just in case there's a minor mishap with my new character and off we go. I'll position my character at the back and hope he doesn't get Thaddeus bombed. Then using the support from the other characters to increase my new character's damage I will get through this mission around the same time as finishing the campaign battles. That is a lot of effort, but with all the preparation and understanding how to navigate through the missions, you can easily end up with an epic one character. Congratulations! And that's everything we have for today. Do you have other battles that you use to grind through the ranged and melee missions? Or maybe you have some more tips you'd like to share with everyone? Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you next week where we look at does Exeter Row 1.15 slash X do anything? See you then.